I was speaking to a woman who sees me for spiritual direction recently, and she asked a really significant question, a question I want to explore with you. But to understand that question, I'm going to have to tell you a lot more. So before I do that, I want you to subscribe to this channel and I want to invite you to click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. So the woman who is seeing me for spiritual direction grew up in an evangelical Christian household, uh, with, you know, with her family very involved in the church. The church was the center of their lives. After she graduated college, she moved to a different part of the country. And it was when she was out as, as an adult, away from her family and away from the church, that she began to explore what faith and spirituality really were about for her. A significant part of that journey was joining a progressive Christian church that encouraged her to ask questions and to learn and to not take things at face value. And that gave her the freedom to really authentically ask about the connections between herself and spirituality and faith. Part of that process was she wanted to learn more about yoga, but she didn't want to just do exercise at the neighborhood yoga studio. She went to an ashram to learn from Hindu people about Hinduism and yoga and how it all fit together. She became interested in Buddhist meditation. So similarly, she went to a Buddhist monastery to learn from Tibetan monks. And it was based on that experience that she developed her practice of meditation. So she's really put together this unique spiritual path for herself that includes the progressive Christianity and yoga and meditation. And, and she feels very comfortable in that. And, and that's a wonderful thing. She shared with me that unexpectedly, someone she was part of the high school youth group at the church reached out to her on social media. She hadn't heard from this person in decades since they were teenage girls. She thought she wasn't sure how to respond to this. So she looked at, at the person's social media profile, looked at the profiles of other friends that they shared in common in that youth group. And she told me that I looked at their profiles and, and the pictures, and I thought, they're very much still evangelical Christians. They're still where they were when I knew them, and I'm a very different person now. And as she shared that, she was saying that she didn't know what she had in common or could really talk with them about because their lives seemed so different. And then she paused and asked, what if they're right and I'm wrong? What if they are right? You know, I think many people who grew up in conservative religious environments and are able to break free of those constraints sometimes ask those questions. What if the beliefs that I was raised in were really right all along? And I think those questions, that question, what if they're right, really is a kind of hook. And it's a hook to something very particular. In another video called Soul Wounds, I talk about spiritual and religious abuse. Now, we know that in various religious and, and, and spiritual settings, there's sexual abuse that happens and there's psychological abuse, but we don't talk a lot about the spiritual abuse. The spiritual abuse often comes in the form of being told that you have to fit in. You have to believe the things that we believe. You have to have spiritual experiences just like our experiences. You have to behave in ways that we deem appropriate. And if you don't, Maybe you're possessed by a devil, maybe you have a demon in you, or maybe you're obstinate and stubborn, and because of that stubbornness, you're going to go to hell. The message that happens is because you don't conform to what we want you to conform to, there's something wrong with you. And we don't label this as clearly as we should but that is spiritual abuse. 
the question, maybe they were right, really brings us back to that spiritual abuse. It's a hook that takes people back to that relationship to the abuser, that belief system, that church, that whatever a group it was, and causes them to rethink what's going on in their own life, even after they have done a great deal of work, maybe in therapy or in other forms of work, to become whole and better integrated people. I think we underestimate the power this has on people. I had a friend who was a Roman Catholic priest. He was a very progressive individual. He, he really was an expert in terms of, of spirituality within Christianity and other, other traditions. He lectured internationally. He wrote a great deal. Uh, he was likable. He was gregarious. He fit into all kinds of different social situations. He was just a really great all-around individual. In the late 1980s, he contracted HIV AIDS, and he died a few years later. But in the year or two before his death, he became a very different person. He became a very rigid Catholic, unlike what he had ever been before. He, pra he prayed the rosary multiple times a day. He went to confession every day, sometimes twice a day. He was convinced that he was going to hell, that there was nothing that could redeem him, that his life was just a total waste. His Irish Catholic mother called me one day, very distraught. While she was a devout Roman Catholic, she, she said, I don't recognize my son. He's never been this way. Can you talk to him? Can you do anything to help him? And indeed, I, I was talking with him and trying to be supportive. He was a good friend. And nothing that I could do could help ease the anguish he was experiencing. And indeed, he, he died, you know, a very difficult death, both physically as well as because of this spiritual anguish he was experiencing. No one can, can solve this problem for someone else. It takes an individual to come to the point of really labeling what occurred as abuse and being able to set a clear boundary around the abuser, the abusive belief system, the abusive church, congregation, group, whatever it was, and, and keep it out of one's life. I mean, that's what we look at doing whenever somebody has been abused in a marriage relationship. You know, you get the person separated, and you get them to live a life apart from the abuser. That's when the healing occurs. We know that people who believe in a God that's punitive, a God that is vengeful, a God that is going to be judging and unforgiving, those individuals have a much higher rate of mental uh, mental illnesses like depression and anxiety. They also have physical health problems like cardiovascular issues. People, on the other hand, who believe in a God who is loving and forgiving and accepting have a much lower rate of those kinds of mental health and physical health issues. What we believe makes a difference in every other dimension of our life. But no one can solve that for another person. Solving that really takes an individual working through that hook of were they really right all along. I believe that the woman I'm seeing for spiritual direction will be able to work that out. But there are many people who still get hooked by that. You may be one of them or you may know other people who are. And to that end, I really encourage you to support them in their process, but to remind them that this is abuse, that this is a form of abuse that's subtle and that can be really nasty in holding us back from accepting and loving ourselves. So maybe you wanna share this video with them as part of that encouragement. But of course, please subscribe to this channel 
like the video, leave me some questions, and know that I really appreciate that you took time today to be with me. Thanks, and have a good day.